I was playing one too many nerds, I think, in my day. That's just an observation. Not sure if it necessarily helped me in the long run. Hi, I'm Eugene Levy, and today I'm gonna watch some scenes from my career. I, uh, I bought some magazines. Do you want to just flip to the uh, center section? Well, this is the, this is the uh, female form, and uh, they have uh, focused on the breasts, uh, which are used uh, primarily to uh, feed young infants, and, um, and also uh, in foreplay. Right. All my scenes were improvised, although I thought the script was a brilliant script by Adam Hers. I didn't really care for the, the part of the father, I didn't really like the way it was written. I wasn't getting much out of it. It was more kind of a nudge, nudge, wink, wink, kind of let's be pals, father-son relationship. So Paul and Chris Weitz, who directed it, said, well, this is a week before the shoot. And they said, what would you want to change? I said, I'd like to change everything. So he said, well, why don't we come in? Let's arrange a get together with you and Jason. Just improvise our way through the scenes. You see that? See what she's doing? She's kind of looking right into your eyes saying, Hey, big boy. Hey, how you doing? You see? Right. It wasn't uncomfortable at all for me. The only thing uncomfortable for Jason in the scene was trying not to laugh. If you really look at his face during this scene, you can almost see him holding it in. It's just one lie. What did I say? You said two lies. Well, it is two lies. No, it's no, the game is two truths and a lie. It's true. So you've game. heard of it. Yeah, you've well, heard well, of it. Yeah, because babies play that at their birthday parties. Okay, whatever. It's a good oh, game. Babies okay. Play it at now, birthday. here's how it goes. I'll give you an example. Why don't I start? Um, I'm miserable, drunk, and hate this game. So, here's a hint. Sadly, I'm not drunk. This was an early show, I think it was maybe the fourth show in our very first season. And the most fun aspect of this show uh, for me was always the family scenes when we're working together. The scene itself is, uh, you know, two truths and a lie. I find out my daughter you know, spent a spring break going to Thailand and actually bribing a drug lord with sex in order to get out of a car trunk. So it's not what a dad really loves to hear. You did what? That probably uh, made its way into the script uh, with a lot to do with my son, Daniel. That two truths and a lie probably wouldn't have come from me because I've never played it. Everyone can just calm down because Arun was a lovely gentleman until he ran out of money. How many people do you know that are currently in the prison system? All right, that's enough. Good game. Good game, everybody. Alexis, you're grounded. No, that was 10 years ago when everybody does dumb stuff in high school. You were 17? I just love the interaction. I love this cast, I gotta be honest. And what we tried to do with a scene like this was to make it as natural as we possibly could by keeping the dialogue very loose and not being afraid to step over each other and keep the interaction as natural a a as we could. We tried not to kind of break up on camera, although it did happen from time to time and you can't do anything about it. Did you know this? As if, I don't do girl talk. Catherine was uh, always Moira uh, from the very, very inception. She was reluctant to uh, be a part of it because when you sign for a pilot, you're signing for five seasons. So she didn't want to do that. We finally told her, look, you know what? If you want to just do the pilot, there's no commitment. You don't have to commit to five years. If you don't want to do the series, if we go to series, you don't have to do it. Then she finally said, uh, well, okay, all right, I'll do it. And then she got to love the show and we went to series and she was fine. I would look for any opportunity to do something with them again. I love to make people laugh and I've been doing it since, you know, school. People ask me, were you, uh, you know, where you, where you must have been the class clown. And I say, uh, no, I wasn't. But I sat beside the class clown and I, I studied him. What were the instructions when Chris said, action? Look like a dentist. So I focused on the mouth. That's acting. My first day, I walk on set and I say to Chris, so where do you want to rehearse the scene? 
before we shoot it. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, where do you want to work it out? Where, where do you want to like work out the scene before we go on camera? He said, I don't follow. They said, now the camera's right, right there. We're going to do it on, on camera. What were you thinking? I said, I don't know what I was thinking. So there's no rehearsal. There's no, we don't rehearse. Being the first time on camera, the character comes out the way it kind of comes out because I'd never kind of rehearsed the character. My grandfather, uh, Chaim Prolgut, who was very, very big in the uh, Yiddish uh, theater back in New York. He was in the, the very, the sardonically irreverent Dibbik Schmibbik. I said more ham. Well, it was pretty amazing, because I, I really didn't know Chris at that time. I just found him to be hysterically funny and so interesting to watch. I'm in Toronto, and I get a phone call from Chris, who said, I'm, I'm thinking of doing a movie. I've got an idea for a, a script for a movie. Would you want to work on it with me? And I was dumbfounded because I wasn't sure why he was calling me, but I said, sure, that's, that's fine. We can work on, on this thing. But as it turned out from day one, we got along so well. Uh, he was making me laugh. I got a few laughs out of Chris and we started writing, waiting for Guffman. And I just thought she was the, the prettiest thing that I'd ever seen. And, and she was there with somebody else. She was very popular back then. She had dozens of boyfriends. Hundreds. Hundreds. Yeah, hundreds. I did not know that. <laughs> We were going through the outline and going through the Jerry talking about meeting Cookie. We were talking about the fact that we're at a dance and he was kind of shy. So I was saying, oh, no, no. Yeah, I've got two left feet. I was very, very, very shy. And I kind of look and I see Chris kind of looking at me. And I look back at him and I'm saying, no. He's going, why? No, we can't. No. No. Actually, to, why not? And we laughed for about 20 solid minutes. And right then and there, he said, no, you're sitting and you're sitting. And then we go right down and we see both feet are left feet. Nobody really knows what anybody looks like or sounds like until you get on camera. There's no uh, consultation with, with the director, with Chris. He lets the actors do whatever they want to do in terms of what they look like, what they sound like. I felt I needed a little something in the front of my teeth, so I had a couple of teeth made that accentuated the whole look around the mouth. Catherine, when she saw me, what she had said at the time was, <laughs> oh, this is who I'm married to. It's a lot of fun getting on camera for the first time with other actors that you're playing with in the scene and realizing, ah, this is the character. Oh, when the veil of dreams has lifted, there's a kiss at the end of the rainbow. I know this song. This is that really pretty one. We had to learn our instruments, right? Because we're gonna be playing these things on, on camera and actually singing. Most of the people in this movie were actually musicians. The folksmen, Chris, Harry, Michael, musicians. They've done this kind of thing before. They did Spinal Tap. It's all legitimate music. And most of the other uh, people in the other group, they had good musician ringers in that group. But Catherine and I, we didn't. It was just us. We always felt the pressure of the actual performance. We had uh, written uh, Mitch as a guy with severe problems. First of all, they were married. Then they divorced. They had a terrible breakup, huge fight. They split up. Mitch did not you know, take it well. Now there's a reunion. What is this guy gonna look like and sound like when we eventually see him? Because we've heard his entire history before we get to see him. So I walked on set as this 
guy, Mitch, and I was getting very strange reactions from people on set, and I got so nervous because I wasn't getting good reactions. And I went up to Chris, and I said, Chris, I, I'm, I'm getting a weird feeling. I'm getting strange reactions from everybody, and I've come to the edge of the cliff on day one, and I've just fallen off. And Chris said, well, it was a brave choice, and I thought, okay, well, this is it. It's too late to change character. I'm going to be the torpedo that takes down this whole movie. So every day I went out to do the character and the character just seemed to play. I mean, it just, it seemed to work and people took to the character as we went on. When Chris was finally editing the movie months and months later, he called one day to say, boy, this, this stuff is really working so well. And I went, wow, that's, that's good to hear. The premise was these, you know, these guys are as nerdy as, 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 you know, as can be, and yet they were a huge hit. The funniest thing about these guys is Joe's character, the guy who played Ann, as a bit of an alcoholic, and every time you see him performing, he's just slightly drunk. That made me laugh. My thoughts pulled my tie from my collar, so don't step on my clip-on tie. It was the Second City Theater that was the biggest school, a comedy school, and that was the art of improvisation. We learned that at the Second City. SCTV, I, I have to say, there was very little improvisation on the actual program. We did, we did end up scripting, you know, everything. And I wrote a lot of the musical stuff on SCTV. There's five parts, and three of us actually did the five parts. But, you know... Fun stuff. That was uh, probably, you know, seven, eight of the uh, greatest years of my life. Indy four. Indy four. Indy four. Eugene, that's a dog command. Oh. You need a sheep command. Oh, well, the dogs are here, so I guess it worked. We're actually in Germany on the island of Zult, spelled S-Y-L-T, and uh, I didn't know there was an island in Germany, but uh, that's where we were. I was at a complete loss. I mean, I got some instructions on what to say to the sheep. I not only forgot what the instructions were, but by the time 600 sheep are behind you, bulldozing their way past you, you, you just have, really have no control. I'm feeling the weight of the responsibility. Come on, Shopey. I should be wearing robes like She's Moses. So She's trying to teach me how to lead the sheep and I was all over the place. I, I just couldn't, I had no control over these animals. So it was up to Uda to, you know, keep the sheep in, in harness. And we had a tough time because they, they actually got out of control at one point, started eating all the shrubbery in these million dollar homes and gardens. So it was up to her to get them out of there fast. Not up to me. It was up to her. Thanks for watching. <laughs>